of the Indian Hill Church. Today is Sunday, February 28th, and we welcome you to our worship of God. Gospel of Mark chapter 8 verses 31 through 38. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo a great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this all quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain a whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give back in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous, sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes to the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks to God. Spirit. Amen. Now some of you may or may not know this about me, but I come from a family of educators. My mom and my dad were both teachers, several grandparents and even great grandparents were all either teachers or principals. And so growing up, we were allowed to have a packed social and activity schedule as long as we were still doing okay in our classes. My parents always had us reading at home, learning grammar and math tricks, and even had us singing along in the car to made up songs to teach us our multiplication tables. And because of all of this, I think I was just sort of destined to become something of a teacher's pet. Now, not over the top or anything like that, but I often saw the approval of my teachers, akin to that of my parents. My respect for them and my mom and dad were nearly one and the same. And the few times I got in trouble at school are seared into my memory with shame and regret. All of this to say, I feel for Peter. Now, I never had a teacher call me Satan, but if I did, I think it would be quite traumatic. Although Peter wasn't a quintessential teacher's pet, he was constantly trying to please Jesus, always seeking to ask good questions, always trying to get it exactly right. And whenever he stepped out of line or was called out, ultimately when he denies Jesus, these experiences pained him to no end. Ironically, the gospel scripture for this morning comes immediately on the heels of a moment when Peter got things exactly right. In the verses preceding this passage, Jesus asks all of the disciples, who do people say that I am? 
And they give him a range of answers. They say, well, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, or prophet. But then Jesus asks a second, more pointed question. But who do you say that I am? To which Peter responds enthusiastically and correctly, you are the Messiah. Peter must have been on cloud nine, giving the right answer in front of all of his peers. But it all comes crashing down in today's gospel reading. Now for the context of this passage, it's important to know that Jesus was gaining popularity and found himself surrounded by a lot of people at this point. Things seemed to be going well. The movement was growing, but with Jesus' new foretelling of his ultimate suffering and death, he was creating a threat to his own success. You can imagine it now, Peter watching his beloved leader saying all the wrong things to this big crowd of people, statements that might deter them from following him. The cross was the most prominent symbol of destruction and failure in the ancient world. Why would anyone want to take up their own cross to follow a leader who is predicting his own death? Now, as a pastor myself, I can sympathize with Peter's concern. We all want the church to grow, don't we? We all want the stability and the excitement that comes with a pew-packed community. Peter can't imagine that what Jesus is saying is what he actually means. These ideas, they don't fit into the imagination of how Jesus is supposed to reign on earth. Why would the long-awaited Messiah have to die? Who would sign up to lose their life? And how in the world could that be the path towards saving it? In the end, what Peter really wanted was a militant Messiah, a commanding savior that would exert his power to the Roman government. Peter thought his place in Jesus' posse was the means to an end of his suffering, not a prolonging of it. And so that's how we get to this big moment, the mutual rebuking and the devilish name calling. The word used here that's translated as Satan, it also means adversary. It's the same word we find at the beginning of Mark's gospel, where Jesus spends 40 days being tempted in the wilderness by another that he considered an adversary. Perhaps this moment was taking Jesus back to those early days. Perhaps he was reminded of his wrestling with the temptation to lead his public ministry by earthly authority. Perhaps Jesus knew that the gospel he was preaching would be rejected by many. It sure is tempting to preach a gospel of prosperity and success. That gospel sells. That gospel quickly grows churches and money and influence. That gospel is far easier to believe, but it is not the gospel of Jesus. The gospel of Jesus turns the whole thing upside down, flipping the economy of this world on its head. The gospel of Jesus doesn't promise power or profitability. The gospel of Jesus offers a place in a new kind of kingdom, one where God's mercy is for the sinners, God's presence is in the suffering, and God's power is exalted in weakness. This is the place where you will find your life. But you must first be willing to lose it. It's a suitable message in this season of Lent. 
the time in the universal church when we come face to face with the question, which gospel do we love more? Which do we choose, the gospel of this world or the gospel of Jesus? It's possible that some of us might walk into this season with trepidation, with fear of coming face to face with ourselves, our sin, our faults, our propensity to so quickly lose our souls if it means gaining the world. But I must admit, although this season is not easy, I find it to be a breath of fresh air. And Lent, we are given permission to fully recognize the burdens of this life, to come to terms with our human limitations, to journey with Jesus to the cross, a path that is inevitably paired with suffering. As we travel together for five more weeks of Lent, my prayer for you and for me is that we settle into the gift of this season that we slow down, we examine, and we ask God to wake us up to the truth of the gospel. May we be willing to take part in this new reality, and may we pick up our cross and follow him. Most holy God, creator of all that is, we give you thanks for calling disciples to follow you. Help us, O oh God, in this Lenten journey to understand what it means to deny ourselves, to take up our crosses and to follow you. Help us not to give in to temptation and help us to stay true to our faith. Gracious God, we remember before you this day those who are sick and hurting, lonely and isolated. We remember the dead and the dying. In the quiet of this moment, O oh God, we offer our prayers for all those on our hearts and in our minds. O oh Lord, our God, hear our prayers. We pray for all those that are caregivers, doctors and nurses, for orderlies and those who must make difficult decisions about care and end of life. We pray, gracious God, for teachers and students as they prepare for spring break not too far away. We pray for safety and travel and ask your blessings to be upon us all, gracious God. We pray for our community, our city, our state, our nation, for all the world. We pray for peace and understanding, for goodwill. We pray, gracious God, for leadership that is strong and wise. We ask your blessings upon each of us as we continue in this Lenten journey, grant us strength for the rest of the way. For this and all of our prayers, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Take up your cross and follow Christ, nor think till death to lay it down.
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and grant you peace now and forever. Amen.